Recruiting is on fire and we need to talk about it because there are some programs that are surging right now. And uh, I don't know how else to say it. Welcome to the party, Florida. They asked me all week, you going to talk about us? You finally going to talk about us Saturday or Sunday? Yes. Yes. And you know why? Because there is not smoke. There's just straight up fire from Gainesville, Florida in recruiting now. Billy Napier has tweeted out that smile wearing the shades. I don't know how many times over the past few days, and with good reason. Jakeem Jackson, four-star corner, committed. Jordan Castell, four-star safety, committed. Aiden Mazzell, four-star wide receiver, committed. Andy Jean, they took him from the clutches of Miami. Four-star wide receiver, committed. They are rolling. And the Florida Gators, once left for dead, not necessarily by me, contrary to allegations, but by some, you know they've got the 12th-ranked class in the country right now? You know their average player rating is 91 port 14 right now? And still climbing. They had the Friday night lights camp. Friday night. Uh, I had a text from someone in the know around the Florida program. I said, how did FNL go? And they texted back, A++++. I don't know that anyone's ever texted me that. I asked my parents how the show went tonight. They don't say A++++. So Friday night lights, home run. And you, you land some commitments from that. That's great. As the folks who follow the Florida program very well know, the key there is the relationship building. You're trying to build layer upon layer, class upon class worth of relationship building down there. And with a new staff, it's imperative they do that. As I've equated it several times, watching the ebbs and flows of the Florida recruiting effort under Billy Napier so far, it's like watching someone try and drink from a fire hose but the thing about it is they've, they've gotten the worst of the water pressure out of the way and they're starting to get some sips and the sips turn into gulps. They may finish with a top 10 class. I did not think that was possible. I will tell you that. I did not think it was possible. I was over on Swamp 24-7 a couple of weeks ago and I was fighting off some of the fringe lunatic haters of me. And then there were just some normal folks who also hate me. And then there were some others that were willing to have a rational conversation. And I said to them what I thought, which is my strategy would be, you've already missed on some guys. The NIL structure is seemingly wobbly behind the scenes. So my strategy would be just finish as high as we can. I think I said top 20, try and land a top 20 class, but really get your ducks in a row for the next cycle and fill in the gaps in the portal. I guess I underestimated what they were about to do over the next month because they're sitting there number 12 right now. And so today here's the new over under bet. Does Florida finish with a top 10 class? What are the odds? What can we get? I guess we got to get Will Fong, not Vegas, to set the odds on this. Maybe Ivan's Florida guy. Set the odds on that for me. I think they're going to possibly, maybe, fence riding, fence riding, they're maybe going to finish top 10 in recruiting. I, it takes a big man to admit when he was wrong, and I am that big man. Florida recruiting has found a groove, and it does not look to be stopping anytime soon. Texas A&M also making some moves. A&M was in the 60s last week. They're in the 40s now, ranked 42nd in the country. Those team rankings just creeping on up there. Uh, Tex Ags, these people are maniacs. So Tex Ags, I am a frequent visitor there. It's not in the 24-7 network, but I don't care. I go over there anyway. I, I did a radio hit with Billy Lucci last week. Did, um, oh man, it was a Ryan Fowler show. And we're both sitting there and are our mics working? Are they not working? Who cares? You're getting to hang out with Billy Lucci and the guys, David. Just I met everyone from Texas last week. But to tell you how crazy recruiting is around AM, there is a thread on the Texas board that can't be more than a day or two old because it's about a recruiting event this weekend. It is over 1 million views, it's 90 pages deep. And it's just people are insane. People are maniacs, but I love them. That is our audience. Th those are the people that traffic in our show. I love that uh, because those are the kinds of things that you take to someone. Like my old, old, old sales department when they asked, how do we justify doing a college football show year round? Uh, look at this Texag thread. This is about recruiting. This is about a pool party in July, sir. It's got a million views. What are we showing on air in the place of what we could be talking about here? Anyway, that's, a, that's, a, that's an entire different tangent. Texas A&M recruiting, as I've said for about a month now, when people have asked about where they're going to finish, they are going to finish in the top 15. I would bet they're going to finish in the top 10. I have all the confidence in the world in that. 
because I saw how they recruited last year, and more importantly, I saw how they closed last year, and I know what they can offer. And I also know what they can't offer. And that list is very, very short, very far exceeded by what they can offer. So I was talking to producer Jesse out in the bullpen earlier today, and I said, what's the downside? If you're trying to sell me A&M's not going to land an elite class or a high, highly rated class, what's the downside? There has to be a downside that's pushing a kid away from College Station, right? And we, we didn't even make it 45 seconds. That was a brief conversation. There is no downside. Some, some of you out there think, man, they're just dropping NIL bag after NIL bag and they're convincing kids to come to a place that otherwise is undesirable. What I try and counter with, and those of you who have never been out there, I don't really waste time on that. If you've been out there, you get the attraction. It's a place where you don't sacrifice anything. You're not giving up the ability to be developed to go there for NIL money. You get both. You get developed. They've got a very good track record of development, especially if, if you're a defensive player and they've been loading up on them. That defensive front class was insane last cycle. Why not go there? So the other part of this is, and I had this rebuttal made to me earlier today, when I said a and I believe is still going to land a top, top 10 class, let's just say top 10, someone told me they can't land a top 10 class. I said, why is that? They said, well, look at the... Look at the uncommitted list. There aren't enough kids. And I said, you and I are looking at different lists. Texas A&M looks at a, an icon, a little logo. You know, Texas A&M staff, let me put it that way. They look at that list and they see every kid uncommitted because they're confident that when they get them out there, they can flip anyone they want to. Now, that is a little bit too, too much hubris, but not, not as much as you may think. Because I am telling you, as sure as we sit here, there are flips coming from some high-profile players. I'm not talking necessarily Tony Mitchell or anything like that. I'm not speaking specifically about a kid. I'm saying it is inevitable that Texas A&M is going to flip multiple high-priority, high-profile candidates and targets out there. And all of a sudden, they're going to rocket up the recruiting rankings. And you're going to find yourself, if you're doubting them now, saying, okay, I doubted them, but I didn't know this kid was in play. I didn't know that kid was in play. They're all in play. Just assume everyone's in play and you'll be much better off when they do what they're going to end up doing. I've said my piece. Let's move on. Uh, Ohio State, is the sky falling? Can you be ranked second in recruiting and have the sky falling around you? Well, no is the short answer. But there are some issues here, but they're very specific. So first off, here's the good news. Uh, Stats and Info tells me that Ohio State is one of just two classes with more than 15 four-star rated players. Their average player rating is good for third best in the country. So there are a lot of good things happening. But it's not perfect, and uh, I don't need to tell anyone close to Ohio State. You guys know what the date June 24th means, and you know how disastrous that Saturday was, that weekend recruiting event was. Those of you who don't follow recruiting hardcore, you may not know. So I want to direct your attention to the screen right now. For those of you listening on podcasts, we're looking at Ohio State's notable commitments right now. Now, again, they've got the number two class in the country. This is where you have to get nuanced in recruiting. As I've told you before, I could land 25 four- and five-star receivers and finish with the number one class in the country and get blown out every year because I don't have balance to my recruiting. What is missing on this graphic right now? Look up and down. Three wide receivers, a tight end, an offensive tackle, one defensive lineman, safety, tight end, couple of corners, an offensive lineman, a quarterback. There is no beef. There is no front seven help here. And if they don't rectify that portion of this recruiting class pretty quickly, there's just going to be a void. Now, the good news is they have very more than adequately loaded up at those positions the past couple of cycles. May have missed on some kids they wanted, but they did good enough. But you don't maintain the level of play they want to, and you don't overturn a defensive style of play like they want to without loading up every single year on those guys. You got to have too many of them coming in. You got to do what you've done at receiver, you know, to, to put a finer point on it. Ohio State has to recruit defensive linemen like they've recruited receivers. You got to recruit them so much so that you look and you kind of have fun saying, I wonder which five star is going to transfer out of here in a year and a half because he can't get on the field. Not because he sucks, but because we're too deep. 
That's how you got to recruit them. They don't recruit like that right now. And it's not going to matter against Rutgers. It's all due respect. It's probably not going to matter against Maryland. It matters against Michigan, as you saw last year. It very much matters if you get into the playoff and you face you face lines of scrimmage like Alabama has or like Georgia has, or like Clemson has, or like Oklahoma could have. It matters, and you got to match it. Or else all these racehorse receivers and these five-star quarterbacks, it gets wasted, and you just have a nice season in the Big Ten. They don't look for nice seasons in the Big Ten up there. They look for trophies in the trophy case. And so... I, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to end. It's very, it's very early still to be freaking out. I, I think it would be dumb to freak out over this. And it could just be that this is one class where this happens, and then they rectify that, and, and they're good going forward. But it is an issue, and I think most Buckeye fans get that. I mean, that's all they're talking about right now. They get it. It's an issue. It's just crazy to me that that, that weekend, that big recruiting weekend, was that big a disaster? I don't have time to go into it, and it would bore most of you, but a ton of big names were in town, and they whiffed on all of them. And there were some comments afterwards about how this weekend kind of wasn't good at all. I didn't get a lot of attention paid to me. I, so one kid didn't leave his room the whole weekend. They just had too many kids there. And in, it used to be in the summertime, that's not a big deal. We're going to have them back on campus after Christmas for the January official visit flurry. This is the flurry now. What I've been trying to tell you guys who maybe passively follow recruiting, this summer stuff, this is the final shot you get with most kids now before they're going to make their commitments and then shut their recruitments down. And Ohio State blew it a couple of weekends ago. Now, that's not normal for them. That's why it is so weird. To me especially, it's weird. So keep an eye on defensive recruiting for Ohio State. Alabama's Alabama. They, uh, since we last spoke about them in recruiting, all they did was land Caleb Downs who is one of my favorite players in the country this year, and Richard Young, five-star running back, on, on the heels of a high four-star rated running back from Georgia last week. The average player rating in this class for Alabama right now is 94.89. I think people forget, Bama had one of the best classes in the history of recruiting last year, and it got overshadowed because A&M had the best in the history. Bama finished with, I think, a class rating of 322 last year. And their player rating, their average player rating was higher than A&M. They had a, an average player rating above 95, which is ridiculous. It's supposed to be illegal. And they're bordering on that again this cycle. They may finish with the number one class again. I know that when we had Nick Saban on the show at SEC Media Day, it was the furthest that he's gone, at least that I've heard, of looking you in the eye and saying, hey, this new world, this new NIL world and the new world, therefore, that we have in recruiting, it's not going to hurt us at Alabama. You know, he, he previously had just said it's not a good thing overall, but he hadn't specifically told you the truth. And he finally just looked at you and said, essentially, he said, we're, we're going to dominate. We're going to be fine. Nothing bad is going to happen to us. It's going to happen to the rest of you. You know what that sounds a lot more like? It sounds a lot more like one of his patented warnings that he's issued several times over the past decade to decade and a half to college football. And yet some people out there, I mocked you two weeks ago. I'm going to roundly mock you again. You called BS on it and you said he's scared. He's, he's, yeah, he's, you, tell, you know what he's scared of? He's scared he's not going to have enough room for all your five stars in his class this cycle. That's what he's scared of. Alabama's doing exactly what they've always done. They will continue to do what they've always done. It's laughable to me that we still address this, but yet here we are. So there's nothing much to talk about. Uh, headline, Bama's dominating in recruiting. Next, I did want to touch on Notre Dame before we wrap up the segment here. They've got 20 commits in their class. They are the number one rated class in the country right now. And they've got most of the hay in the barn. They, they will not finish with the number one class in the country. They will finish with one of the highest rated classes they've ever had, at least in the modern era. And there's such a different energy around the program. And I know that some of, some of you who either played the game or who have been around the block several times, you get really tired of hearing that. Because energy does not matter. When it's third and two in week three and you need a stop in order to get off the field and preserve a 23-17 lead, no one cares about your energy in July. No one cares about the hype videos you, you filmed. That's true. That's all true. Here's where it matters. Where it tangibly matters is the new energy around the program is attracting a different kind of kid 
than the previous staff did and the previous kind of energy did. And those kids will ultimately be the ones on the field when it is third and two and 23-17 and you need a stop late in the fourth quarter. And that's what's starting to happen for Marcus Freeman and Notre Dame. Now, here's the follow-up. We don't have a sample size for Marcus Freeman yet. He's been a head coach for one game, and that was the bowl game. And so we're still going to find out. So if you want to if you want to wait and see, and they have very mixed results this year, and you want to start that talking point that, oh, he's all hype, but once they get on the field, they'll blow it. Okay, maybe in time that's going to happen. Or, hey, maybe they'll take Ohio State to the wire in week one, and they'll be a fringe playoff contender all year in year one under Marcus Freeman, and they'll finish with a bang in recruiting and have a top five class. Wouldn't that be crazy for Notre Dame? But keep an eye on the Irish. It's not like there's, there's been a, a huge change. They've been up here for a while. I just think that we need to keep acknowledging it. Also, producer Jesse tells me six of the top 13 classes currently are SEC classes. If we do what is becoming all too popular and we just go ahead and add Oklahoma and Texas, that would be eight of the top 13 classes in the country made up of either current or future SEC programs.